you were raised, were you raised by both parents? Yes. Father and mother in the home? Yes. And as a result, you didn't get in a lot of trouble and carry on like that? Well, I mean, I think we all get in trouble, I think. But like, as a result of having both parents in the home, you didn't get in as much trouble as those kids do that don't have both parents at home? No, nah, I mean, I definitely did because I was with the kids that got, that didn't have both parents at home. I think we so are. So you're saying, yes, you did as much damage as they did? Well, I, I think the issue isn't that I did as much damage as they did. I think, again, teenagers, regardless of, you know, whether they have two parents in the home, whether they have, you know, just a, a working mom or both parents are working or no parents are working, right? Like teenagers do stuff because they're teenagers. So did right? you cause as much problem having two parents at home as those kids did who did not have two parents at home? Well, again, I think the, like, that's, that's not the, the case, right? Because, like, some of those, because some of that stuff is, is conflicting, right? So my mother passed while I was in high school, right? You know, and then we shifted over to, a, a, you know, single-parent household with my dad leading that, right? Like, so that same narrative doesn't necessarily fit neatly. You know, I have a lot of friends who, you know, went through all kind of different things, but it wasn't because that their, you know, their parents were or were not at home. They but what were I'm going trying to through find things. Did you get in as much trouble as a result of having two parents at home as opposed to those kids who did not have two parents? Well, again, right, like, like well, how did are you... Did you get in that much trouble? How are you defining trouble? You know, fights and break-ins and acting out of orderly and the schools and things. Did you do all that as a result of having parents in the home? Well, I don't think that was a result of having parents in the home. So your two parents didn't play a role in your life at all as important to how you conducted yourself when you were out? Well, I, 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 think, the, I think the challenge to what you're asking or how you're framing it is that parents and parents alone are the thing that's going to stop that. Well, I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm just asking, having the two parents in the home did that impact you differently than it did with the kids who did not have two parents in the home as far as how to carry yourself and act when you're out in public? Did that impact you? Well, I, I think uh, it, it would be a lie to say that it didn't. I think the issue isn't that. But did it right? impact you in a good way? I mean, it, it, of, of course it did, right? Like, and but, so if those other kids the... had two parents at home, is there a possibility that it will, they would be impacted by having, in a good way, by having two parents in the home as well? Well, I mean, again, right, like, so, so that would then put the blame on, on the one parent household and specifically black women for doing that. And what's I, wrong I, with that? I, I, I wouldn't necessarily blame them for that because I don't think that's, I don't think that's the case. I think the issue, again, right, like the, the broader issue when, when we start looking at social systems and how systems play a role in this. Right, is that um, is that when we start talking about raising, loving on, and making sure that black children grow up to be successful and full adults, right? Like one of the broader issues is that regardless if you have a two-parent household, Trayvon Martin had a two-parent household, right? Regardless if no, you he have didn't. No, his, 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 his parents were separated, his father with another woman. Well, but uh -huh. yeah. So, but but again, right? One like, parent. Well, it's a one-parent household, but they were co-parenting. No, he was, go they he was going to his dad's place. I know, but his father <laughs> and mother did not get along. Well, so so what doesn't matter is and his father with another woman. Well, well, what what doesn't matter, right, is whether or not mom and dad get along. What does matter is the fact that they're both contributing to their child's life. But since you right? are a community ordinary, I'm just asking you. You had two parents in the home, so your life was. You carry yourself differently than the kids who did not or do not have two parents in the home. Do you think that if they had two parents in the home, they would carry themselves differently if they had two parents? Well, uh, it, it all depends on context, right? Like, because if, if it depends on who their parents are, right? Like, because you could have two parents in the home who are incredibly abusive. You could have two parents in the home right, who aren't necessarily showing you the things that they need to show you. You can have two parents in the home and you can still, right, like be put on a path of, of all kind of struggle. A New York Times report came out that showed that black boys who are raised in two parent households with the highest level of income still have the highest probability of being poor in, in their lifetime. 
And that's not because of the parents and the parents alone. It's because of institutional and systemic racism. But what I'm asking you, and I haven't gotten an answer to, and I, because you're a community organizer, you're involved, so you would know, if the kids had two parents in the home, are they more likely or less likely to conduct themselves in a better way? Well, again, I think they're... With all being equal, are they more likely or less likely? There's no research that would, that would support what that. What do you say personally? Are they more likely or less likely if they were raised by two parents to again, conduct themselves in a better way? So again, as a, as a, not only as an organizer, but also as a researcher, as a scholar, right? right like I would, I would strongly caution against rhetoric like that because... Like what? It, well, saying that somebody would conduct themselves better if they But I'm asking, I didn't say, I'm just asking. Yeah, so, Are they less likely or more likely to conduct themselves in a better way if they had two parents? No. Like, again, they're less likely to? No, it's, it's that, it's that they're, it, in order to say, in order to make a claim, right, to make a claim that says somebody is more or less likely to do something, right, like what we would need is we would need data that would suggest that, you know, somebody is more or less likely to behave in a certain way based on a particular set of criteria, right? Now, what the research has shown us especially when we're talking about raising black children, in particular black boys, it doesn't matter what your social circumstances are, right? It doesn't matter how you behave or how you act, or even if we think about somebody like Elijah McClain, who was killed by police, um, who was killed by police last year, you know, you had this really, this really soft boy who was playing violin for kittens, right? It doesn't necessarily matter who you are or in what sort of aspect you have, you are still subjected to racial inequality. Amazing. So, so it doesn't necessarily matter, right, like if you have two parents in a household or not because we live in a white supremacist country that is the United States of America. Amazing. What's the, so let me just ask, did your parents, two parents in your home, did they impact you in a negative way or a positive way? Well, there's a reason why I'm here now. Did they impact you in a positive way or a negative way? In a positive way. So they had a lot to do with the way you carry yourself, the fact you went on and got a college, get a college degree. And, and my parents also raised me, right, to make sure that whatever I do, that I work with, I build with, and I love the black community. And do you right? think that would happen for most of the kids if they were raised by two parents? Um, if they were raised by two parents who instilled in them values that similar to my parents, right. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I think you can do that with one parent. You can do that with no parents, and you can do that with, you know, good mentors. Well, in how about community. two parents? But again, right, like the parents in and of themselves, right, like while it is an important factor, it's not the only factor. Um, you, um, you belong to an organization called, no, you work as a manager of an organization called Brother Sons Slave Coalition. So, in Los I'm sorry? Selves. S-E-L-V-E-S. -E and, oh, Selves Coalition. Yes. I saw the slave. But what is that exactly? So, uh, so I, I think this is important, right, to yeah. connect it to your point. Um, we're a coalition that works with nine community-based organizations um, that works to build the leadership and the organizing capacity of boys and young men of color, right, so that way they can go out and change institutional laws and policies for themselves. Right, so um, to give you an example, we have coalition partners like the Brotherhood Crusade, like the Social Justice Learning Institute, that work specifically with black boys. And some of the work that they do, right, like is they provide the mentorship, the guidance, they provide some of that trauma-informed care. Um, in some cases, they even invest in therapy for their young folks, and because of that, right, like they have been able to drastically change the results. For multiple years in a row, these programs have had over a 95% high school graduation rate. For the people who that, for the young, for the young men who have been arrested before, who get into their programs, over over 90% of them don't reoffend, right? So, so again, right, like when we talk about these broader issues of uh, whether or not people may have parents or whether or not people may have those things, a lot of it boils down to resources and these programs that I work with give young people the resources and tools that they need to thrive, and they thrive. If they were raised with good, decent parents, both parents, would they need the program? A absolutely. Really? 
Um, I know, trust what, me, like, I, I know, like, we, we've had kids who had two parents, both parents were in a household, and they needed just as much support as our kids in foster care. Were they married or unwed? Um, they could be married, they could be unwed, they could be divorced. It doesn't, like, again, right, like, the broader issue isn't the parents. What the the root, broader issue is supporting young people. What is the root cause of gang uh, uh, membership? Why do, what's the root cause for men, boys and girls joining gangs? Well, I, I, I think it depends on, it depends on, right, like what you're looking at it as, right? Like for the, for the young folks who I've worked with who were involved in gangs and for the people who I knew who were involved in gangs, right? Like some of it was connected to family. Some of it was connected to economic opportunity, right? Some of it was for protection. So when protection. you say economic opportunity, are you saying they're stealing and killing because they want money? Well, I, I mean, when you have no other options, yeah, like that's. We have no other option. You were still and killed to get it. Well, I, I think I, I think I wouldn't because I have options. Right. Right. Like but if you didn't, you were still and killed for it. Well, I, I, I think again, right? Like, like I, I don't think it's that simple, right? Because when when we're talking about broader issues, even even when we talk about crime. Right, like when we talk about crime and these broader issues, a lot of them are crimes of poverty, right? Like to, to give you an example, in the state of California, we passed a proposition called Prop 47. Prop 47 turned nonviolent drug offenses into, um, from felonies to misdemeanors, which then allowed the people who were locked up behind drug offenses, mainly for marijuana, right, to now go get jobs. And some cities have invested in permits. Now, the, now one of the issues with this is that at one point in time, it was illegal, right, to sell weed. But now, right, in 2020, right, over 80% of the companies that are running dispensaries are now white owned. So here are white men posed to do the very same thing black men were trying to do, but black men were incarcerated for it at a disproportionately high rate, right? So again, like, so, so when we talk about this idea of crime, Right, like, yeah, people are doing it because they're trying to make money, the same way that these white folks are trying to do. Which is most important, to change the character of the person or to change the law? It's to change the law. But not the character? Uh, I mean, I think systems impact behaviors. So when the systems change, right, then therefore the behaviors will then change. It right. Really so, 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 look, look, so to give you an example of what that looks like, right? Like on that campaign that I was telling you about back yeah. in 2012, the Measure GG campaign, right. we did that with all black male youth. Some of them who had third and fourth grade reading levels when we started working with them. Their reading levels increase, their abilities to speak publicly increase, right? Their abilities to read and write increase, right? Like we taught young folks how to do college level research research that I learned as a PhD candidate. We taught 15, 16, and 17 year old black boys in Inglewood, California, how to do that, right? And that was because, you know, and, and again, that was because we invested in them and we created a system that then changed their behavior. Would men and women, boys and girls of character, would they rob, steal, and kill? If they needed to. Would they do it if they were of character? Well, so to give you an example of what this looks like, right? In, um, in, in New Orleans, um, when Hurricane Katrina happened, right? Um, there were two pictures that, um, you know, the internet wasn't as popular, but there was a lot of media frenzy around it. Yeah. There were two pictures, one picture of, uh, of a white couple who was going in the stores and looking for things, and the media said that they were scavenging and that they were trying to survive. Right. When a group of black folks did it, they said they were looters, right? Both people are doing exactly what they need to do, but they're framing it differently, right? So again, like when we talk about of character, people do what they need to do in order to survive. And I think the broader challenge to the phrase or to the framing of it is that if we are going to, if we are really going to be of character, we're going to talk about character, Right, like we need to be talking about the character of the people who allow, right, like poverty, who allow these things to happen while certain people benefit and the rest of us, including regular white folks, don't benefit. So would men and women, boys and girls of character, would they rob, steal and kill? 
I think the real question is, would a country that was of character, right, allow an entire American city to go without clean water for five years? Would a country that was of character, right, like, you know, allow over 1,100 of their citizens every single year to be killed by law enforcement? Would a country that was of character, right, like allow, you know, their education system to not be one of the top five in the world, right, to not invest in it that way and still brag about being the best country. So I think when we're talking about this idea of character, right, like I think people's character is a reflection of the systems that they're a part of, of the systems that they're in. So uh, not think a, about that. Not a reflection of their parents, but of the system. It's a reflection of the systems, yes. But not of the parents. Yeah. So with men, women, boys, and girls of character, would they rob, steal, and kill? Again, like I said, if they needed to. You're saying yes, they would? If, uh, like, so, so for example... Are you in, saying yes, they would? Um, I'm, uh, what I'm saying, right, like what I'm saying is I think the, the broader framing of the question then implies that there are certain people who are not of character right, like who are doing these things because there's something inherently wrong with them, not the conditions that they're in. I'm saying that if you change the conditions, people change. But you haven't answered my, because I don't know, you're the expert, so I don't know. I'm asking, would men, women, boys and girls of character, would they rob, steal, and kill? Well, I think, so to give you an example, Can right? Can you just like, give me a yes or no? It's, because it's not, of time? Uh, absolutely not, because it's not because it's not that simple, right? Somebody like Malcolm X, right, like who did rob, steal, was a part of all kind of other things, right? Became one of the most famous orators and black leaders in the in 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 the world, right? You know, and that's because you know folks from the Nation of Islam poured into him and invested in him and his leadership, right? So um, so when we're talking about this idea of like our people of character, right? Like character can change when you change the conditions. So- Are you I'm, a Christian? Um, I'm, I'm, I am a Christian, yes. You are a Christian. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how important is education? How important is education? Yes. Like a 12, it's hella important. On a scale of one to 10, how important is it, is, is, is it to have two parents in the home? I think what matters more is are these parents supported? It's cool to have two parents. I think it's important to have two parents. I think what I'm more concerned about is do these two parents have the resources and tools that they need in order to raise their children? On a scale of one to 10, how important is it to have two parents in the home? I think it's important for these parents to have the resources and tools that they need. Uh, on what scale, one to 10? How important is it to have two parents in the home? Um, I think, uh, again, right, like I think it's a, it's a 10 for the parents having the resources that they need. That's what I'm going to say. Well, you and that's gave my me answer. a 12 when I asked about education, yeah. but you don't know how important it is for two parents in a home no, on I'm, a scale of 1 to 10? No, I, no I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, I, what I'm saying is it's important to have, for those parents to have resources. You can have two parents in a home but like if you are living in poverty, if you don't have access to the resources, if you can't feed your children, right, then it is still going to be an issue, right? So you can have one parent, right, like you can have one parent, you know, this parent has a six-figure job, this parent is, is, is working really well, their kid goes to an Ivy League school, right, and then that is that's what happens and that's so, a good thing So you're not even to give me a number on the parents i'm telling you right now it is a 10 for parents having resources i refuse to answer the question on whether or not it's important for two parents because i don't fundamentally believe that two parents and two parents alone is going to be the is, is going to be the, the factor how it's important for the parents to have resources how important is it to have for bo black boys and girls to have a father in their life um, I think what matters the most is do they have positive adults in their life? How about right? a father? Like, How I important think, it is to have a father? I, I think, so to give you an example, right, like um, um, at, there's a professor at San Francisco State University who talks about this idea of social fatherhood, right, where um, young men who are in the community, 
right, would become mentored and because who are... Because of time, I'm asking how important it is for black boys and girls to have their father in their life. I, I think it's, it's always important for parents to be involved in their kids' lives, right? I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think it is in a, a scale, uh, I would say a 10 for parents to be involved, right? For all parents to be involved. How about for black fathers? Um, I mean, for black fathers, I, I, I would say... How important it is for black fathers to be in the lives of their boys and girls? Have you seen the recent research where, um, where it actually indicated that black dads were the most involved? In their in their kids' lives. But I'm asking, how important is that to have? It's that? it's incredibly important. 